Here's the RTX 5080. Guess who didn't really finish all the benchmarks in time, but still, I still want to get something out so that you guys can see how this does perform from what I do have. And because this GPU comes out tomorrow along with the 5090, so I don't want you to make like some kind of stupid purchasing decision, but let's just keep this straight. Let's keep it fast. Here it is. It looks basically just as nice as the RTX 5090 does. The really the only difference between them is the freaking little logo that's on it. So it says the name of the graphics card differently. And the 5080 is a little bit of a lighter shade of finish on the metal. Like the, it's more of a gun metal, whereas the 5090 is closer to like a blacked out look. As well as the 5080 is just a little bit lighter than the 5090. But this thing is sad. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's sad. Like we were already set up to be kind of disappointed about this guy, but let's just look at some benchmarks that I have right now. As you can see, I'm in DaVinci Resolve. This is my editing program. It's rendering. These renders take forever, like hours to render out. I only got time to test a few games, but basically you can see the performance right there. It is loud and clear. It's only like 4% faster in Last of Us Part 1. This is basically a 4080 Ti. <laughs> plus a new feature with DLSS multi-frame generation. You can see here in Cyberpunk at 1440p Ultra, it's getting like 23 FPS, but if you jump up to 4K, it only gets 18%. Give it a little bit of upscaling at 4K, it's only 13% faster than the 4080 Super, 28% faster if you turn on 4K Ultra. We go over to Black Myth Wukong at 1440p native, it's only getting 7% faster in this game. And then if we go up to 4K, it's only getting 11% more performance. So that's not exactly that crazy, guys. Going to Alan Wake 2 at medium settings 4K, it's only 11% faster. At 1440p, it's only 6% faster than the 4080 Super. Not that crazy. The same stuff applies in ray tracing. This is ray trace of Alan Wake 2, 5% faster. But with very high ray tracing and whoop bike with Wukong, it can get like you know, 14% faster, I guess that's kind of decent, maybe because of the new ray tracing cores, I don't know, 100%. Go with a little upscaling, and if we go to 4K, it's 18% faster, which is pretty cool, but uh, yeah, it's not all that exciting. You would expect maybe we get a huge uplift in ray tracing if we're not getting a huge uplift in rasterization, but that's not really what we're seeing here. Ray trace reflections only getting 6% faster in Cyberpunk, and um, <clears throat> it's actually slower here. I don't know why it's slower here. I didn't double check that number, but it is slower in Cyberpunk here versus the 4080 Super. Go up to 4K with ray tracing. You still can't even really use ray trace just reflections on this thousand dollar graphics card. I mean, you're still getting 40 FPS at native. You have to use some upscaling at 4K. And uh, you can see actually the 4080 Super pulls ahead here. I might want to rerun this test, but that is really not good for the 5080. We turn on RT Overdrive, it's 18% faster, but even at 1440p native, you're only getting 33 FPS. If you turn on some upscaling, it's only 4% faster. Turn on performance upscaling at 1440p, it's only 5% faster. It, like the performance just, it's not that crazy. And to be honest, that doesn't really surprise us because we, we knew the specs beforehand. Okay, this the reason I've been comparing it against the 4080 Super is because these are the price competitors. I've actually been told by NVIDIA themselves, they want me to compare it to the 4080 Super, but they advertise against the 4080 for some reason. It's really annoying. It's only 6% more CUDA cores and it's only 6% more ray tracing cores as well. And if you go down to the memory bandwidth, this is the thing that you'd think would be probably significant and leading to more performance. Yes, we're getting 30% more memory bandwidth on the graphics card. So down here, that's the memory bandwidth, and that's because it's going to GDDR7. And I think that's why in some of these tests that it ends up you know, performing a little bit better at 4K, because as you go up in resolution, like say here in Cyberpunk, we go to 4K, it's 18% faster, and that's because up in resolution means more memory bandwidth because it uses more data. The faster it can go, the more performance you're probably going to get. Okay, and if we want to chart this out, it really doesn't even stand up well against graphics cards we've already seen. Okay, so to check out hardware on boxes data, and yes, this is the one with the 5090 in it. It's 27% faster than the 4090, which isn't that impressive, especially when it costs 25% more. But you can see on most of these tests, it's like maybe... 10% faster than the 4080 Super that we tested here. That's 81 FPS. Add 8 FPS to it. It's at like 90. And it's maybe beating the 7900 XTX from AMD. It's it's still pretty far behind the 4090. I'm yet to test the 4090 yet, but it's not going to beat a 4090. If you're wondering if like a 5080 is going to be a better value than a 4090, you should just pick up that. That's not going to be the case. It's, it's, it's going to be slower. It has less VRAM too, as you can see here. Um, it only has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the 4090 has 24 gigabytes. Let me go grab my 4090. 
This is the 4090 that I have that I will be testing at some point. This thing is freaking massive. It has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It's going to be faster than the 5080. It won't get the new multi-frame generation, but that's pretty much about it. And these 4090s have been selling like really, really well on the used market. We'll see if that keeps keeping up as this goes, but it's been looking pretty good. There's also a fear too. The new cards might have a supply shortage at, at launch, which would mean that they're going to cost a lot more than even what this thousand dollar price point will end up costing here. It really, it's not really looking that good. But maybe your person is like, oh, I wanted to see the 5080 to see if I actually wanted to get a 5090. I mean, the 5080 is still a very fast graphics card, but it's it's not really that much of an uplift on the last generation. But I do have some numbers on the 5090 comparison I wanted to show you real quick. The 5090 isn't always that much faster. Like in Black Myth Wukong here, it's only 17% faster, but I wouldn't really take that as as bible a lot of the time it's so like here at 4k medium settings and alloy 2 on quality upscaling it's 53 percent faster on the 5090 and that's pretty much what i've found is most of the time at least in like the four or five games i think i tested five games on it so far 4k ultra and cyberpunk it's 50 percent faster as well and last of us part one 4k ultra it's 60 percent faster in, in this game um, and we can check out Marvel Rivals as well. 4K high settings, that's 43% faster. The 5090 is quite a bit faster, but it does cost twice as much. And, you know, with the shortages and everything, it's probably going to be costing way more than $2,000. It's twice as much, and it's not twice as fast. It has twice as much VRAM, and it's basically twice the GPU in general, even in terms of power consumption. A lot of times it is like double it. Let's check on Stalker 2 here. You can see the 5090 can achieve 83 FPS at 4K and the 5080 can only achieve 59. 5090 can also do things like RT Overdrive in Cyberpunk <coughs> at 1440p, which is pretty cool without any upscaling. Like here, the 5090 can get 54 FPS, 5080 is stuck at like 33. So that's the type of performance differences that you can see here. I just wanted to get this out so you guys are aware of it and uh, I, I wouldn't really be looking at the new cards. I don't think you're missing out on that much. We, I already made a video on multi-frame generation and so did Hardware Unbox. Like they really broke it down and it's not always that good. You need a lot of things in place, like a high refresh rate monitor to take advantage of it. And there's quite a bit of artifacts and stuff in motion. So I really wouldn't like buy it for that. And I don't think you're missing out on that much in this GPU. If, if you don't want it, the, the 5080 here. In fact, I think a 4090 is still a much better GPU, like by quite a bit. You're going to get a lot more raw performance. You'll miss out on, on one feature. I guess if you're talking AI performance, this does have faster AI performance than the 4090, but then the 4090 has more VRAM, which lets you use more AI models. So if that's a crap you're into, then go for it. But I'm not really into that, so I don't really talk about it. That's about it, though. Um, let me know what you guys think and enjoy all the reviews and stuff. I just don't get scalped. I don't think these cards are worth killing each other over, but I guess we'll see. Peace.